<laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> Wow! We've just hooked the freight train! Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Keeping It Real. Today, we're about 90 kilometers off the gorgeous Whitsunday Islands on the GBR, the Great Barrier Reef. As you can see in the background there, you'll probably able to see a bit of the reef. I'm excited. It's a perfect day. It's stinking hot, about 90% humidity. We got a light five knot northerly wind. Um, it, it's looking good for the reef here. So I'm excited. Let's get a bait in the water. Let's go fishing. We're on. Oh. So we're about our third bait down, guys. I don't know what it is. I don't think he's too big, but he's still a nice fish. Feels like a trout. Oh yes, he's a nice cold trout. Got guys is a is a nice cold trout. I've got the hooks out of him. We'll have a bit of a look at him. And they're common for, for this part of the area. He'd be legal. Legal's 38 centimetres. He's a really nice trout, so he'd be a keeper, but um, we're gonna let him go and let him get a lot bigger and fight for another day. Have a go at the fangs on him. Look at that big mouth. And these, these are predatory fish, you can see those teeth. So this guy is probably, he's about a kilo fish. Beautiful eating, really nice eating. High sought after, especially in the overseas market. But we're gonna let this guy go, let him live for another day. And he'll take off. And there he goes, away he goes. Okay guys, today I'm using the Muley or the Western Australian Pilchard. So I'm using a um, 6 hook. So how I like to do it, using a whole bait to give that presentation, is the hook through the eye, pull it all the way through, then I like to slip that hook sort of midway um, from the tail, and then you have this perfect, perfect bait for presentation. Let's give it a go. Oh. oh, try and get him up off the bottom. We're fishing a, uh, we're fishing another big drop off, guys. It's quite a good drop off. He's got a head shake. He might be a trout. I'm feeling, feeling shaken. No, actually got a red throat. And a nice red throat. Beautiful leading fish. <laughs> Just sprayed me sunnies. Really nice fish. And they go, they fight really hard, especially in this sort of depth of water. We've, we've gone into a bit deeper. <sighs> Look at that guys. Beautiful red throat emperor or sweet lip. Beautiful fish, his colors. If you look down his throat there, beautiful like a fire engine red down his throat. Being an ex-fiery, you know, I've been a, I was a firefighter for nearly 15 years. That red is, what a reminder. And a beautiful fish, beautiful eating fish too. Okay, we'll let him go. Oh, he's away, he's gone. Live another day. Well, that's how good's that. 
We're on our second spot. We're about half ten in the morning. Take the sunnies off so I can see see the camera. Um, yeah, about half ten in the morning. It's a uh, it's an ebbing tide, uh, about midday low, and yeah, we're just going to work this reef edge all the way around. Um, and just pick up a few fish here and there and see what else we can get. Hopefully we get a few more trout and a variety of fish that we can show you guys. Enjoy. <laughs> That's fishing. <laughs> that was a nice fish. Yeah, actually I could feel it um, running through the coral then. So I didn't get enough on him. He's come up, he's grabbed it and uh, obviously scooted back down. I could feel the line rubbing through the coral and we, yeah. Yeah, frayed or me leader. So I'm using 60 pound leader. That happens, that's fishing, gotta love it. I'm just using a running sinker. I prefer the running sinker. It's only a um, four bean, so fairly light. I like that pilly to sort of drift down through the water column. Um, you know, you get your predatory fish like your coral trout, uh, even your, your red throat or sweet lip emperor. We'll see that bait sort of floating down in through the water column and hopefully nail it. We'll give it a go. Oh, holy dooly, we're away again. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, went really hard there. Feels like a trout. Oh, look at, oh, it's a monster trout. <laughs> what a fish. Oh, it's about the hook. So, what happened then, guys? We were um, getting some awesome underwater footage with our underwater cameras and he, he done a head shake and spat the hook, which is, I'm not too worried about what these fish do. The, the trout, when they hit, they, they shake their head. Whoa. <laughs> oh, turn it on. Oh, this is nice. This is a nice fish. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even make it to the bottom. I don't know what this fella is, but he's nice. He's got some sting in him. Oh, I can, oh, shark, big shark. <laughs> we got some teeth down there. <laughs> okay, guys, we're getting, um, slowly getting to the bottom of the tide now. It's nearly midday. You can see this edge here that we've been working most of the morning. Just get a couple of fish, move on. We're just finding bits of bottom, you know, where it rises or drop offs. Um, so it, it's really slowed down. You know, I was taught many years ago uh, when I was doing reef fishing as a professional uh, career. Um, no run, no fun. Well, we've run out of run and the fun has stopped. So, um, might be nearly time for a, for a uh, chicken sandwich, I think. So, we'll just see what happens. But yeah, while it's a bit quiet, probably the next half an hour, 40 minutes, the tide will turn, start to flood. So we'll have that incoming tide. So that tide's gonna come off, off these reefs and that's, that's the place where you want to be because any food or rubbish that's on that, that reef, it's going to get washed off and into this water where we're sitting now. All your predatory fish, they'll be hanging in this area waiting for the, for the num-nums and the goodies to come off that reef from, from the low tide. So might be time for that chicken sandwich and um, we'll uh, have a rest for five or ten minutes and we'll go from there. You can see them going burko. It's a matter of throwing your slug in and hanging on. They've got that much bait there. I've watched a few of them chase me lure, but 
they haven't actually hit it yet, or me, uh, me slug. Oh, right into the centre of the the frenzy. Oh, oh, we're on. Oh, there you go, guys. Wow, we were um, just cruising along, seeing some birds working. And I thought I'll throw me a little metal slug. Oh. And uh, the bonito. It appears that's what they are. Seen a few jump out, little metal slug. Oh. They go. Good fun to catch. A little bit quiet. Tides, um, the tide sort of slowed down. It's just starting to turn. Oh, I dropped him. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> it's coming up to the surface. Oh. Wow, she's motoring. Oh. And these guys grow to about six kilo and they'll inhabit waters anywhere from about 3 metres to about 160 metres. They've got all the bait rounded up here now, so... They've worked the bait from the, from the bottom up to the surface. <laughs> You're giving me some stick. And great bait when you're out the reef. That's a really good bait. <laughs> nice fish. Give me the runner around. Oh, look at him in the water there. Fine Bonita, beautiful colours, absolutely beautiful colours. Okay, I'll let this guy go. I normally do keep them for bait, but they're beautiful fish, about the five kilo mark. Great fun. Way down and he just smashed it. Ah, it's definitely not a shark. He got some go. Oh. <laughs> got a big knot about it, either big lipper or a trevally. I'd go. Yeah, big trevally. Oh, they go. Big head shakes. Not a big fish, but yeah, another bludgeon for Valley. Yeah, how wide they are and fat. We'll let this fella go. Oh! He's away. We're on again. Oh, it's a bit better. I'm trying to get him out of the coral straight away. Get a couple of pulls on him. Not sure what this guy is. I really don't know what he is. Looks like some sort of cod to me, like a coral cod. 
Beautiful colours in him. Big eyes. But he's some sort of cod. And we'll let him go. Let him live for another. Oh! <laughs> he didn't want to hang around. I suppose you got a mug like mine. Well, guys, that was the GBR, Great Barrier Reef. Wasn't a bad day. It was bloody stinking hot today. We got a couple of fish. Um, the heat was the biggest thing that was killing us, um, trying to keep cool. Um, a good thing to remember if you are out on the water, keep hydrated, especially on cracker days like this. Um, but anyway, that's a bit of a wrap for today. Up next is VMR Minute, followed by Fish and Dish. Around the wet Sundays and generally, channels 16 and 67 are your hailing and calling channels and emergency channels. Once you have made contact with another vessel, if it's within line of sight, go to another line of sight channel, 73, 74, 77. Uh, if you're on a repeater and calling someone on 81 or 82 and they're nearby to you, go off the repeater. That only ties it up for other people go down to another channel, a line of sight channel. 73, 74, 77. Don't tie up the repeater unnecessarily. And if you have uh, two VHFs, got a portable hand, handheld VHF, some of your party are on the beach, uh, don't call them on a repeater channel. Don't, don't call shore party, shore party on channels 81 or 82. Make sure you know which direct line of sight channel you're going to use. Hi guys and welcome to our cooking segment, Fish and Dish. Today I've got my young fella here, Chris. He's going to show us how to cook a red throat emperor or sweet lip that we caught um, the other day on the reef. So he's going to do a simple dish for us. I'll pass you over to Chris and he's going to walk us through what he's going to do with this fish. Alrighty, so today it's going to be super simple. We're just going to basically stuff this fish with some tomatoes, some onion and a lemon wedge and basically wrap it in alfoil and whack it in the oven. Can't get any easier than that. And, and this is pretty simple cooking. You know, the simple dishes are often the best. Let's get into it. Let's get this, this right. fish cooking. Let's do it. So we'll get rid of that. All right. So take a bit of onion and some tomato and just stuff him in there. Now it's nothing delicate. You just want to get it in there. So we've got a whole tomato that's been sliced into pieces. And we've got a whole small uh, yellow onion that we've quartered. And we're just gonna start filling up this fish with these different various pieces. Okay. So he's pretty well stuffed. We've scored the skin as well. And that just makes for quicker cooking and lets those flavors really seep in. So he's pretty much good to go. We'll wrap him in some alfoil, whack him in the tray. Bit of salt and pepper. Yep. Grab that tray. Yep, easy as. Here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> bit of alfoil, trusty tray. Okay, we'll lay down a bit of alfoil here. Place our sweet lip friend on there. Salt and pepper. Lay the dill on top. So this is real simple, simple cooking guys. This is what, what it's about. It's about simple meals, easy to prep, get the full flavor of the fish, you know, without overdoing it with the, with the herbs and spices. It's just simple. All it's, right. It's looking good already. <laughs> so once he's been hit with the salt and pepper, we'll get another bit of alfoil just to lay over the top of him. And just get one of your lemon wedges and squeeze it over the top of him. And then you tuck that one inside for a bit of added flavor. All right, so he's good to wrap. So we'll lay that over the top of him. Get it nice and firm, tuck it up. Both sides. Fold it over and then bring it into the middle.
Okay, so he's pretty well wrapped up, ready to go. Yeah, we'll whack him in the oven and we'll see you then. Let's go cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck him in there. Yeah, we're doing this this cooking segment today, you know, by our pool here at, at the Keeping It Real House. You know, it's beautiful day, you know, with Sunday's weather, as usual, turned it on. Really humid, but what a great day to cook a piece of sweet meat. I reckon, can't get any better than that. Okay, guys, we're about to pull this fish out of the oven now. You know, we forgot to mention earlier on, the fish is about a kilo and a half, so, you know, you're looking about the 25 minutes at 200 degrees, have that oven preheated to 200 degrees before you slip the fish in. But that's a, a rough calculation. So let's grab this fish out and see what it looks like. That smells awesome. Yeah, that Ooh, smells yeah. better. Oh, that smells unreal. Oh, oh. Right, eh? The unveiling of the lipper. All right. How good does that smell? That smells unreal. And that is awesome. <laughs> it smells like nothing else, mate. And the best part about wrapping the fish in the alfoil is it steams in its own juice as well. So it's using its own flavors to cook itself. And just look at that. that look at the juices awesome. coming off it. Oh, you can't beat fresh seafood, mate. And, and that's it. A lot of people miss the, the cheek meat on, on all fish. And you can see it there just below his eye. There's this beautiful pocket of cheek meat and it's all hard bone there and you can actually just scoop that out. All righty, and just to top this off today, we're just gonna sprinkle it with some fresh chives that I chopped up a little bit earlier. We'll just sprinkle that on top. Add a little bit of the fresh herby zest to it. And this, this is smelling so good and it's just finished off with a very simple salad. Like I said, we're about simple dishes, keeping it simple, keeping it real. Bit of lettuce, cucumber, some cherry tomatoes, topped off with a few cubes of lemon. It yep. just doesn't get any easier than Can't that. Can't get any easier but than that, mate. The best bit's still to come. We're gonna have the Reverend come in and he's gonna pair a beautiful beverage to go with his sweet lip. Oh, speak of the devil, there he is now. Well, boys, you've yeah. done well. How, How good, good does that look, it's hey? The smell's coming off oh, this is awesome. Mate, you wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world right now. No, no. Listen. We're North Queensland, we're battling with flies, but oh, that's part of That's part, of, that's part of where we live, mate. That's you know, it. Yeah, yeah. Boys, this is just fantastic. Simple dish, beautiful sweet lips, steam baked in the oven. Nothing fancy, so I thought we keep it real, we keep it clean. Just yeah. a nice crisp lager, yep. you know. Now something like James Bogues, this oh, is this you. is premium beer. Yep. Now it's not overly malted, so it's not going to overpower the fish. Crisp, fresh. It'll marry up with that lemon. Now for the ladies or or, or the <laughs> gents, all the guys, you know, you know, the guys I, I've, I've got a little bit of a vino for myself. Beautiful Samalon South Blanc out of the Margaret River. Yep. So that you'll get the sweetness out of the semolone. That'll bring a little bit of citrus, which will complement the lemon. lemon. Yeah. And then you'll get just uh, that tropical stone fruit on the back end. Oh. Perfect with fish. Yep. Mate. Yep. How good is that? How, so. how good is this, boys? Cheers. Cheers. Yep. I don't think it gets much better. No, this is this is it. Keeping it real. That's it. Keeping it real. Get a bit of this tail. Oh, let's no. dive into oh, this. Oh, oh, let's oh, do oh, it. Oh, oh, look at that. Mm. Oh. oh, that is beautiful. That, that is, is really that good. is good. And come and beat can, yeah. the fresh seafood taste. That is nice. I'm in love. That is really good. That's that's beautiful. I'm going in again. <laughs> if you're liking what you're seeing, guys, with the fishing series and the fishing dish, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Till next time, guys. See you up the creek. Keep it real. Keep, Keep it real. real.